Hello and welcome to week three. I wanted to do a little video to cover three things um, that I want you to think about as you head into week three. This video might be a little longer um, than the previous videos that I've made for you because I'm covering more concepts, but hopefully um, you'll be able to have the time to listen to these concepts and think about how um, we're going to work as we move from week two to week three. And so I'm going to do a little meta right here. Um, I'm going to talk about our class as a means of providing an example to you of how I do user-centered design, how I'm moving you through the course using user-centered design, um, and then help you apply those same kinds of principles as we move from week two to week three. And so three things I want to talk about. One um, is, who is who are your learners? And thinking about teaching, I'm using my notes here, I'm sorry, <laughs> I want to make sure I get everything in. Teaching is helping students close gaps, right, those learning gaps we talk about, and as providing opportunities for them to do so. So being really explicit about our assignments as opportunities for them to close specific gaps. Um, second, I want to talk about scaffolding projects and talk about, in particular, um, some of the assignments that you did for week two as scaffolding for week three and for your final project to kind of model that a little bit in an online class. And then talking about transfer, like moving students from one assignment to the other. Um, and some of the ideas that you guys had in your 2.2 um, projects, 2.3 projects um, with the discussion boards, I want to mention as specifically relating to that. So that's your overview. So step one why user-centered design, and why thinking about it in terms of closing gaps and providing opportunities. So your assignment, whatever the big piece of your week one assignment was, is an assessment of those gaps. So you're asking students to do something to demonstrate they can do five things or four things or two things or six things, whatever your objectives are. So they have to have those built-in practice steps all along the way to be able to practice those stages, right? So the discussion board can be one way that they can practice two or three learning gaps at the same time. An environment gap, maybe they struggle using technology and the dis using the discussion board will help them with using technology. Maybe they have a knowledge gap and so you design the question for the discussion board so that you're really addressing that partic a particular knowledge gap about the reading, about writing, um, about any part of that final assignment that they're going to eventually have to practice. You could be dealing with a communication gap. Um, and some of you noted in your uh, grids for 2.3 assignment under communication gap that you needed to add in explicit language about the fact that a discussion board is a writing task and should be approached as a writing task. And students do writing all the time that they don't think about as writing. And to just kind of make that present for them to start closing that communication gap and helping them to think about that. Um, so that's kind of the overview of teaching as learning to close gaps or helping to close gaps. The trick with the online classroom is to be able to do as many gap closing activities in one place as you possibly can. So in other words, how can you do more with less? How can you do more gap closing with fewer assignments or fewer readings in a course? Um, because you're trying to kind of fight that overload. And um, I know Miranda talked about it in her um, posts for the discussion in week two, like it's a lot. It can be overwhelming. Online courses can be overwhelming. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of writing. There's a lot of thinking that you have to do in an online class. So how can you use one assignment to address as many of those gaps? Are there places where you have two assignments or two parts of an assignment that can maybe be condensed into one that just addresses more gaps? And the 2.3 assignment for creating discussion boards was a way for me to help you think about these materials and ideas. So I am going to pick on Tanner Sullivan um, right now. I'm going to use his, not pick on, but just use his as an example to walk you through how I do this, how I try to get as much as possible into a single learning assignment to help you address your gaps. So I start by thinking about when I design an assignment, my users. So who are they? 
We have nine students in our class, I believe, nine or 10 students. And I'm gonna give you a real quick rundown of who they are. Some of them are graduate students at UALR who are in face-to-face -face programs. Some of you are teachers who've been in the classroom, probably as long as I've been in the classroom, um, who are shifting from face-to-face -to, -face to online. Some of you have never been in a classroom. Some of you are brand new even to graduate study. Um, some of you are undergraduates. So this is a broad range of learners. We have people who have completed master's degrees, who've completed PhD programs, who are working in writing centers, um, who have careers that have been built around teaching and learning and being in these environments. And we also have people who have never taught and who are just thinking about starting a first classroom, starting to engage learners in this process. So that's a really broad array of learners for me. And this is how I address this through assignment design. So this assignment that I have pulled up on the screen right now, um, Tanner's example, just to pull one out of the out of the bunch. Um, I designed this physically. So wherever you're at in the learning process, if you're a new instructor, um, the instructor facing language part might have been weird and uncomfortable for you. So that might be a learning gap is thinking about what is instructor facing language and student facing language. Um, you might brainstorm or talk to a colleague in an instructor facing language. I need students to do this. I need them to do that. Why aren't they doing this? Oh, like that's kind of what I call instructor facing language, like thinking through the meta part of designing an assignment. So in this assignment, um, I'm helping you to really make that instructor facing language concrete to think about the meta. Why are we doing this? And doing this is going to address for you, my students in the class, um, habits, the gaps you might have in habits. Maybe as an experienced instructor, you do this in your head. I need students to do this, so I need to make these materials. Um, but you don't think about connecting them to student gaps yet. So you're going to use this chart to take the knowledge you already have in seated classes and face-to-face -face classes and, and design online spaces. Maybe you've never been in a class. This is going to start you from day one in the habit of thinking user-centered design user-centered design. What do my learners need? How can I address that in, in this assignment? So that's what I'm doing to develop um, habit for you. Uh, environment, I'm using this grid because A, if you know me at all, which some of you probably don't, I love the table. Like I love the organizational structure of a table. I love the clear, simple fluidity of the table. I'm gonna table you to death. But as a heuristic, as an organizational structure, I want you to start seeing um, tables or kind of organizational tools um, throughout the course so you become more familiar with those and working with those. Um, what's another one I can address really quickly? Uh, knowledge. I ask you to read um, the assignments uh, in week two, all of those assignments under presence and interaction, because I know that you're going to have particular knowledge gaps in these areas that you're working to address. Um, and so hopefully all of you were able to go through and read at least the introductory materials for these areas. And as you are creating these assignments, think about how you can use that new knowledge that you have or the old knowledge that you have. Um, to start creating these assignments. And this is really just a piece of that larger, that larger puzzle. I want you to start thinking about just one tiny piece of that larger assignment. So that's how I'm using this activity for this particular set of learners to kind of um, pack a lot of things into one assignment. So you're doing a lot of thinking here. You're building habits. You're thinking about the skills of, of writing uh, discussion board instructions. You're writing discussion board instructions themselves. Um, you're creating student-centered facing language. So how can you write language that addresses a student? What is the difference between writing kind of in your head language and student-centered language? Um, and this is an important point that I see a lot of instructors, and I used to I used to um, be an administrator for an online program. So I saw instructors across the board. I had 200 uh, classes I reviewed every year, everything from anatomy and physiology uh, to um, religious studies classes to writing classes. And I would see sometimes this instructor facing language as student facing language. So an instructor would kind of be writing in their head, creating information and tasks. Um, and then just put it into an online course. Like, here's what I'm thinking about this assignment. Do it. 
Uh, instead of thinking about like, okay, here is where my students are at, my internal language. Here is how I need to talk to them. Here's how I need to communicate with them about how to do the assignment. It's a different tone, voice, um, way of looking at, at language. And it's not just getting what's in your head out onto a page and giving it to students, but really thinking about uh, the ways that students read and think through a process. So that's another thing that we're doing in this text. Where am I in my notes? Okay, so this is a scaffolded assignment that is going to lead you into completing the week three activity. So under the week three activity on the um, website, I'm asking you to enhance that profile to read Dirksen's uh, chapter two, Who Are Your Learners, um, which I'm referencing a little bit in this um, video. Build out that learner profile that you started on that original assignment. So spend some more time thinking about your learners. Go a little bit deeper. Who do you anticipate being a part of the class? Some of you did a great job of doing um, those little learner profiles like Josh is a 22-year-old welder who likes fishing on the weekends. Like you can get that granular with your learners. Like when I designed this class, you are the learners in my head. So I think uh, Jenny, who works in an online university, and um, Belinda, who's new to our program, who's learning teaching and learning online, uh, but who's taken online classes before. Like you can literally think in terms of concrete users that you imagine engaging this course. So fill out that learner profile. And then this list here of what I'd like you to do um, to add to and edit that original assignment and the instructions are posted here so I'm not going to reread them for you but all of this um, or some of this is scaffolded from this week too so the readings these activities that you've done you should be able to pull that those practicing the skills and those gaps over into this assignment so this is practice in filling the gap of creating a discussion board or discussion board language and this is another opportunity to practice um, working on that gap, that skill. Take that language, the student-facing language, and put it into your discussion board activity to help build out that part of your assignment. So smaller chance to practice writing for assignments, larger chance to practice writing for assignments. You might not pull the, the information directly over. You might need to edit it. You might need to think about the formatting, like what goes first, second, third. Um, but these are two two ways of filling in a gap, going at it one way, going at it another way, because for that final assessment, that final portfolio where you're going to demonstrate that you did this, um, that's where all the all that's going to happen. I'm going to assess, did you meet this outcome? Were you able to create a discussion board activity that showed presence and interaction that met learner skills and gaps? Um, so finally, the concept of transfer, and I, I touched on it just a little bit right there, but as you move from week to week, always be thinking about how you can pull the information from one week into another, how you can build on it, how you can use something from the previous week. Um, all of this should be cumulative. And I want to point out two student um, 2.3 activities that I want to mention did really cool things. Um, and again, all of you did cool things. These are just two that I happened to pull out before I made this video. Um, to personalize for user-centered experience. And first uh, is Belinda's. I'm gonna talk about her. In her assignment for her discussion board, she built in um, additional resources for people who might not feel comfortable with discussion boards. So if you don't know enough about this idea or this topic we're discussing, here are a couple additional links to give you some support. It didn't assign them to all the class, and this is a Dirksen concept as well. Um, it just, targeted. If you need a little more help, here's a couple of resources. You can use them or not use them, and it provides support and assistance um, for those users who maybe aren't as familiar or comfortable with it, and then allows users who are not to have to read everything in an online class. So it's a way of, of doing um, more with less. And then Jenny had a really great um, passage in her instructor or her student facing language that started tying what students already do and their environments into how to work with a discussion board. So she had an example where she, um, in environment, said, I know that you're probably busy at work with the kids. Um, try to take a few minutes every day to use the, dis the app on your phone to just go in and read some discussion boards. So she's making that connection. She's 
looking at re users' lived experience and, and connecting the assignment and how to complete the discussion boards to that experience. And then she had another piece where she, in the, um, the habits part, where she talked about how students probably get notifications for bank um, summaries or what do you call them, bank statements, summaries. Um, if you, your credit card gets used, you get a notification. And she explained notifications for discussion boards in terms of those things that students might already be doing. So it made that connection from a skiller habit they already have, so checking notifications on their phone, to this new skiller habit, uh, checking notifications from a discussion board. So those are just two examples of ways that transfer is being used. Here's how I'm talking about your skills and experience, where you're at, and helping you move into this new environment. Um, in really concrete ways. So I think that's about all. Um, I just wanted to talk to you in particular about how I'm trying to model for you the kinds of ways that you can work with your students um, in online classes. And if you see something you like, so a chart or a table or language from my class that you find really compelling or useful or helpful, um, Take that language. Now, you probably don't want to take a whole chunk or an assignment or an activity because this is geared toward um, upper division graduate students, and you are probably writing for not upper division graduate students. Um, but feel free to take pieces of this um, or any of the online classes that you've used. Think about those kinds of experiences that you've had and, and use those pieces. The 2.1 discussion board, don't do the things you said not to do. Do the things you've seen other faculty do. Um, and go at this assignment. Do the first revision. We're going to hit this uh, at least two more times and then the final. So this is just the first stage in building out that idea of what it means to address online learners in an online assignment. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is probably longer than um, I usually do, but I think it's worthwhile to talk to you about some of these things. So let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to reading your week three projects. <laughs>